back to another episode of Sci-Fi Probe. I'm your host, JS, and I invite you to join me as we continue to explore the history of sci-fi in all its mediums, such as books, comic books, TV shows, and films. For as long as humans have been around, they have always envisioned a utopian society. But, what comprises a utopian society? What does it mean to live in a utopian society? What does it mean to a group of people supposedly living in a utopian society? Does it mean the same thing to a group living in a utopian society compared to another group living in a similar utopian society of their own? How about for each person in both of these groups? There have been many books, movies, and songs that have their own interpretations of what utopia is. But as you are about to see, utopia is more of an idea that is easier to think about, but extremely difficult to put into practice. This is where author Thomas More comes in. Thomas More was an English lawyer, social philosopher, author, statesman, and noted Renaissance humanist. Born on Milk Street in the City of London on February 7th, 1478. Thomas More was the son of Sir John Moore, a successful lawyer and later a judge, and his wife Agnes. He was the second of six children. Moore was educated at St. Anthony's School, then considered one of London's best schools. From 1490 to 1492, Moore served John Morton, the Archbishop of Canterbury and Lord Chancellor of England, as a household page. Morton enthusiastically supported the, quote, new learning, end quote, scholarship which was later known as, quote, humanism, end quote, or, quote, London humanism, end quote, and thought highly of the young Moore. Believing that Moore had great potential, Morton nominated him for a place at the University of Oxford, either in St. Mary Hall or Canterbury College, both now gone. Moore began his studies at Oxford in 1492 and received a classical education. Studying under Thomas Lena Kerr and William Grosson, he became proficient in both Latin and Greek. Moore left Oxford after only two years, at his father's insistence, to begin legal training in London at New Inn, one of the inns of Chancery. In 1496, Moore became a student at Lincoln's Inn, one of the inns of court, where he remained until 1502, when he was called to the bar. According to his friend, theologian Desiderius Erathmus of Rottingdale, Moore once seriously contemplated abandoning his legal career to become a monk. Between 1503 and 1504, Moore lived near the Carthusian Monastery outside the walls of London and joined in the monks' spiritual exercises. Although he deeply admired their piety, Moore ultimately decided to remain a layman, standing for election to Parliament in 1504 and marrying the following year. Moore continued aesthetic practices for the rest of his life, such as wearing a hair shirt next to his skin and occasionally engaging in flagellation. A tradition of the Third Order of St. Francis honors Moore as a member of that order on their calendar of saints. 
Moore's best known and most controversial work, Utopia, is a frame narrative written in Latin. When Moore completed it, theologian Erasmus published a book in Levin in 1516, but it was only translated into English and published in his native land in 1551, 16 years after his execution, and the 1684 translation became the most commonly cited. Moore, also a character in the book, and the narrator traveler Raphael Hylodeus, whose name alludes both to the healer Archangel Raphael and, quote, speaker of nonsense, end quote, the surname's Greek meaning, discuss modern ills in Antwerp, as well as describe the political arrangements of the imaginary island country of Utopia among themselves, as well as to Peter Gillis and Hieronymus van Busleyden. Utopia's original edition included a symmetrical, quote, utopian alphabet, end quote, omitted by later editions, but which may have been an early attempt or precursor of shorthand. Utopia contrasts the contentious social life of European states with the perfectly orderly, reasonable social arrangements of Utopia and its environments, such as Talstoria, Nolandia, and Art Castle. In Utopia, there are no lawyers because of the law's simplicity and because social gatherings are in public view, encouraging participants to behave well. Communal ownership supplants private property. Men and women are educated alike. And there is almost complete religious toleration, except for atheists, who are allowed, but despised. Moore may have used monastic communalism as his model, although other concepts he presents, such as legalizing euthanasia, remain far outside church doctrine. Hylodeus asserts that a man who refuses to believe in a god or an afterlife could never be trusted because he would not acknowledge any authority or principle outside himself. Some take the novel's principal message to be the social need for order and discipline, rather than liberty. Ironically, Hylodeus, who believed philosophers should not get involved in politics, addresses Moore's ultimate conflict between his humanistic beliefs and courtly duties as the king's servant, pointing out that one day those morals will come into conflict with political reality. Utopia gave rise to a literary genre, utopian and dystopian fiction, which features ideal societies or perfect cities, or their opposite. Early works influenced by Utopia included New Atlantis by Francis Bacon, Eerie Thin by Samuel Butler, and Candid by Voltaire. Although utopianism combined classical concepts of perfect societies such as Plato and Aristotle with Roman rhetorical finesse, the Renaissance genre continued into the Age of Enlightenment, survives till today in modern science fiction. Moore also served Henry VIII as Lord High Chancellor of England from October 1529 to May 1532. He wrote Utopia, published in 1516, which describes the political system of an imaginary island state. Moore opposed the Protestant Reformation, directing polemics against the theology of Martin Luther, Holdrich Swingley, John Calvin, and William Tyndale. Moore also opposed Henry VIII's separation from the Catholic Church, refusing to acknowledge Henry as supreme head of the Church of England and the annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. After refusing to take the oath of supremacy, 
he was convicted of treason and executed. On the day of his execution, he was reported to have said, quote, I die the king's good servant and God's first, end quote. After Moore had finished reciting the Miserere while kneeling, the executioner reportedly begged his pardon. The Moore rose up merrily, kissed him, and gave him forgiveness. He was venerated in the Catholic Church as St. Thomas More. Pope Pius XI canonized More in 1935 as a martyr, and Pope John Paul II in 2000 declared him the patron saint of statesmen and politicians. For those of you who wish to read the book, it is available through Amazon.com. The link is located below this video. The problem with utopia is that it is unachievable because every person has their own distinct interpretation and would result in everybody being unsatisfied. Thomas More coined the word utopia in 1551 for modern Latin, which literally means, quote, nowhere, end quote, or, quote, no place, end quote. Hence, it is an unattainable and unrealistic goal to achieve. The best we can do is not to create a perfect world, but a better one. The latter is certainly possible and is quite frankly, good enough for me. And that concludes my review of Utopia. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell button if you want to stay abreast for future episodes. In episode six, we will be exploring the story of Christianopolis. I'm your host, JS. Thank you for joining me. Expect me when you see me.